And it's a huge welcome to a beautiful evening in Barcelona at the Polo Club. It's the Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup final. It's Challenge Cup day. Seven teams forward to compete tonight in this beautiful arena. The event started on Thursday, two days ago, with all the teams taking part. They're now broken down into two groups after a rest day yesterday. Seven come forward tonight for the Challenge Cup, and then tomorrow it's a new month, and it'll be a new champion. Tomorrow the top eight will battle it out for the trophy. Well, the weather's looking fantastic in the evening, and I'm Phil Gazala, and I'm delighted once again to have alongside me Jess Curtin, Jessica Curtin, who's won in this arena. Jess, thank you so much indeed for being alongside me again here. We've got an exciting place, and this is going to be a great, great evening. Phil, it's an absolute pleasure to be with you here this evening for this exciting event. And the scene is set. 15 nations lined up for the first of the three days of jumping for the Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup final. Only eight teams could qualify for the 1.25 million euro final on Sunday. Internationally respected course designer Santiago Varela offered the perfect test for day one of this truly international field. As the third line riders started their challenge, it became clear that the leaderboard was impossible to predict. With the anchor riders, the changes kept coming. It was only after the last to go, French world number two, Julien Epillard, had crossed the line with a faultless round, was it confirmed that the top eight, Great Britain, Brazil, Germany, Switzerland, defending champions Belgium, USA, Ireland and France, were to be on the Sunday start list. Great Britain will be jumping last because they were the only nation to complete on zero penalties. The remaining seven nations headed by Mexico compete tonight for the Longin FEI Challenge Cup. And the teams jumping in reverse order as Bekistan will get us underway, followed by Argentina. Then Australia with just three members, Italy, Spain, the Netherlands and the defending champions of the Challenge Cup of Mexico. Their, their Pathfinder rider will be last in of the seven. Uzbekistan, they won a 150 Nations Cup in Mayor Kyrgyzstan and their Pathfinder, Bexod Kurbanov with Mats VG. Argentina had a disappointing start on day one, but team chef Alves Texere, he will be putting his team together to hope that they can move on from that today. Australia, all their scores will have to count with just three riders. Their best rider on Thursday was Hilary Scott with Oaks Milky Way. The Italian team with chef to keep Marco Porro has brought in Gampiaro Gorofolo to replace Lorenzo De Luca. The question is, will that be enough to succeed tonight? Our hosts here in Barcelona, they had a clear from Mariana Martinez Bastida. He'll be first on and brought into the team Alberto Marquez Galabardes tonight with Aldo de Manoir. The Netherlands with chef trainer Jos Lansik were the shock of day one not to be in that big final, but tonight the win is only good enough for them. For the Netherlands to win, they've got to defeat the defending champions, Mexico. They had a clear from Eugenio Garje Perez with Cantago, and he is their pathfinder, the world number three, once again tonight. Santiago Varela, the course designer again here, is internationally renowned, but Spanish is his home nation. Jess, Santi has a big job, as we call him. Santi, he's got to build Paris for the Olympics next year, but this is equally important to him. Absolutely, Phil. Santiago Varela will be building Paris together with French star course builder Gregory Bodo, and what an interesting combination that'll be to have two star course builders building an Olympics. But tonight, he has put up a course here for, that, for the Challenge Cup. I was out there, I walked it together with Santi. It's such a pleasure every time to spend a little bit of uh, well-invested learning with this man. He is really somewhere between an artist and a professor. On the way to number one, he gets him into it gently. That's front bar 147. 
back down to number two. It's 155, nine strides steady down there. You could take an eight, but I think the majority will take nine. Roll back, there's a carriage there. Get them nice and straight for this ox. So there's deep cups in front, so it'll take a rub. As I said, getting them easy into it. There's always a little bit of a question here with the Liverpool underneath of the horses with the lights will shy at that, but it's looking reasonably simple today. Those first four jumps are really there to get them into it. There we have our first 160 vertical. They roll around, it's a long run down to the to the water. It's three meters 90 this evening and our graphics will show beautifully the seven strides down into the double combination. Majority of the riders will have to really slow their horses down after the water to get the body weight behind to get up and jump that. It's quite a bit higher coming out there as you can see 150 coming out. Roll back so get your leg on. It's one meter 90 there and he's brought them on seven steady strides to 160 blanks they're interesting to look at then it's an open it's it's an open six strides and very five and a half an open five now there will be some taking six there to that very skinny oxer it's an interesting line if that skinny oxer will actually catch out some of the riders triple combination is always a little tricky coming home stamina and concentration needed as you see it's not up to maximum height but it'll be enough for tonight and there we have 158 coming and eight. It's six open strides down to this oxer. And I can tell you, Phil, for some horses, that's going to be a very short four to that one meter 60 vertical. And they jump right into the kiss and cry where their fans will be bringing them home. It's a, it's a strong course. Let's see how it goes. 27 competitors. Let's have a look at the top 13. We get us underway with Bekot Bagubanab, with Ubizikstan, uh, uh, Mariana Martinez Bastida, and Eugenie Garza Perez. We talked about them earlier. They've got a bonus if they go clear again tonight. More about that later. Alberta's also for Italy. Kim Emmon brought in for the Netherlands. And Asam Tolibe Bakuntas, well, uh, sorry, Fernando Martinez Soma with high five will be the 13th in just before the break, before we go into the second half of the competition, the Challenge Cup tonight. And that's a beautiful shot of the arena. And this was a few moments ago. Well, in daylight, this was, Jess. And I, I think one of the things that perhaps is easy not to necessarily appreciate is the precision required here. You saw some measurements there, 8.2 meters, then 8.3 meters in between you know, two fences. These millimeters make a difference, do they? Yes, it's wonderful to see there Santi and his team. Santi Aravalera here in the picture. He's, a, he's actually quite a, quite a shy man. That's why he put the baseball cap on, hoping that we wouldn't notice he was there. But he's a very noticeable man in the fantastic courses that he builds and really precision. And there we have our teams out walking the course. You're freely looking very pensive there. Emmanuel Camilli. There we have our Spanish team. And there we have for the Argentinian team. And you can see the riders stepping out the distances. And again, again, there is good shot, seeing that the riders are measuring those distances to turn it into number of strides, to understand how many strides for their horses. The Mexicans, of course, they do have a good chance here tonight. They are a strong team and they've been really building on that. And there is the man behind that Argentinian team, Jose La Roca. He has really been the force putting that team together over the last years. And our, there we have on the left, Jos Lansik, team trainer, he himself a champion here. And there is the man that has ridden so many clear rounds for the Netherlands. And there is a great shot from the aerial camera of what we're seeing here at the side of this arena it's a it's just gone well, about 2100 hours nine in the evening it's about 21 22 degrees looking around the stands the crowds were absolutely queued up all around the grandstands to get in here tonight and of course it's saturday and this is the biggest horse show the 111th year of an event equestrian event in spain the oldest equestrian event in spain and it's set now for the Longines FEI Challenge Cup. Uzbekistan gets us underway, jumping in reverse order from where they finished on Thursday at the first of the three days of jumping. Beck has got Kermanov. He's in the winning team of the Nations Cup in Mayakistan. Kirk, 
Jess, he, he's having a good look around. They've obviously walked the course, but you know, when you come in there, you're just familiarising, you're reminding yourself, are you? Yeah, yeah. It's it, you just like to have a nice little check, and sometimes you like to have your horse to have a look, and the nerves can play a little bit of uh, a little bit of a roulette with your head when you come in, and sometimes a rider just just wants to check the course. It's not that they don't know it; they just want to check. Just see, he really has to steady for the nine strides there. So that will mean the riders outside will look at that, and some will say, "Well, maybe, maybe we, we could take an eight there." And of course, day one was a difficult day for this combination. They had quite a f quite a few mistakes, but I've been watching the whole team and their their uh, whole team harmony over the last couple of days. Very well supported here by Alexander Onoshenko of course, international rider himself, and he's really put a lot into this team now over the last months, supporting them with horsepower and, of course, with his experience. Good man. And you can just hear the whoa, you know. He's, he's so determined to do a good job here. Now going into this line, this is going to be interesting. He jumps a little to the outside. Has to really steady for the seven and open a bit for the six. And he goes for that five, and that's exactly what Santi was wanting, that the horses get slightly disorientated on that five. It's really just an, a slightly forwards five, but with the open corner, they can get disorientated. And, and this, I think, we'll see in the replay, but that was, for me, really one of those situations. The rider's trying unbelievably hard to avoid mistakes, and he's just steady, 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 trying to come in slow. This horse has a very big stride and he ends up just stealing the momentum. Um, disappointing what was up at this point, a fantastic round for this combination. I was just going to say, Jess, that was disappointing because it was foot perfect up until then. Yeah, but this is what happens when you try to um, avoid the mistakes. His big stride, the six comes lovely there, and he has to sit for the four coming home. I mean, what a great effort. 90 seconds, the time allowed for the course, so that completes the round for the first of the quartet for Uzbekistan, Belkot Kavanov with Mats VG. Yeah, you can just see he was steadying and steadying, he ended up coming in on quite a large distance, you know, it was just a little bit too far away for Mats to take off there, and he tried to do it, being very honest, but it resulted in a mistake. So 18 penalties for the first of their four riders for Uzbekistan. Walk down about 150 metres slope from the practice arena. There you can see in the dark before they come out into this huge, beautiful arena here with brand new buildings all around it this year. So it's Argentina, the first of their four. Leandro Moschini with the 10-year-old stallion, Abril Iconfa. waiting for him to jump. Now they jumped a very good round on third. They had just that one fence down, four folds. All the teams bar Australia with four riders, best three scores count. Abril Ithoson jumping a very, very good round on day one, looking very impressive. Got caught out by that little golden blank before the water. There were a few others got caught out at the same time of the, of the light with him. And really, this this combination, very, very impressive. They jump Nations Cup in Brussels for a time for one down. They won a World Cup in Solomeo. Very, very successful season. And they will really be looking towards the Pan American Games. I spoke to Jose La Roca, they were really disappointed with their performance the first day. And, uh, they're wanting now to put in a strong performance today to see where they are now going towards the Pan American Games, where they, of course, will have to try again for that qualification. And he's just eating that six strides down there. 
you can see even he had to move up in the five. Now he jumped, he kept straight over that jumping. It's when they start to turn in the air, heading for the combination that that skinny ox could provide a problem. But we're looking here at one of our stronger combinations of the, com of the competition. And I think that he could, I'm not gonna dare to say it, Phil. I'm glad I didn't. And just the penultimate fence down, another super round for Leandro Moschini. Just 10 years old, Abril Econthon. So first man in for Argentina, posts four faults. Yeah, you can just see he comes down here, sits very, very quiet. I think he was already thinking about that short four strides to the vertical and sat just a little bit too quiet and the horse came down a little bit too early. But uh, what a combination that is. Well, a change of position for the next man in the arena. It's Pier Giorgio Bucci, the first man in the pathfinder now for Italy with Coachella. He was the anchor rider. He was the last man in on Thursday. And now Pier Giorgio Bucci with Coachella comes in as the pathfinder. Just, just whilst PG warms up. What, why would you change a position like that? What, what would be the thought process behind that? Well, of course, the whole team has had a little bit of a shake-up, taking out Lorenzo De Luca, who was their first rider. Um, so they just they just move it around a little bit. And PG is a man, you know, he goes into the, he knows he's got so much experience. He knows what he's doing. And this horse, he gives a positive ride anyway. So of course, if there was a situation, they've got an early draw. If there was a situation with the time allowed, when you send this man in, you know he's not going to have an issue. So uh, yeah. That could could have been the thought process. And you can just see this Coachello and Pier, Pier Giorgio, they really know each other. Coachello's a horse that needs, he runs a little bit at the jump, but when he gets there, he needs the rider to give him support. And PG is very good at doing that. You can see he lets him run down on the seven and then balances him at the end. That was really, you could see so well, a rider-horse combination that, that, that trust each other and know each other. This horse is really a beautiful jumper, but he needs his rider to be very present when they get to the jump, like this man is. Gives him time, but then he's there for him. And you can see also he finds that five very open. That's exactly what Santi wanted to do. He said to me walking the course, walk that again, my friend. <laughs> and he gets caught up. Interesting. So they're opening up to get the five strides for the skinny oxer and it's catching them at the triple combination. Interesting result, but he's just running out of petrol at the end of the course. And that results with the three fences down, so 12 penalties for Pier Giorgio Bucci and Coachello for Italy. Finished recently in the 10th place, the Italian team at the Milan European Championships in front of their home crowd. Just see, he's, he's had the pressure on him the whole way, and he just, he just kept running to that vertical. He didn't back off, as we say. He didn't put his body weight behind on the hind legs to get the push from his hoofs up over, over the jump. He just kept going forwards. And then I can see, I, I think Coachello has not been jumping at this level so much, just getting tired at the end. The European Championships recently, we mentioned about Italy finishing in 10th place, or finishing in a fantastic 5th place, were our hosts here in Barcelona, the Spanish team, they finished 5th, and their first man in is Mariano Martinez Bastida, a big cheer for Mariano, he's riding Bellano, Van and Winhova, Zangas Island Bread, and they jumped a clear Jess on Thursday, and we just quickly mentioned the bonus, any rider that jumps clear on the first day and tonight will share a 50,000 euro bonus. There are two in it, and Mariana Martini Bastida is one of them. Yes, and, and that's a very, very important bonus and a very exciting bonus um, for the combinations. And um, this man, he jumped a great clear round, and I think Groom Mercedes will have been really delighted with his horse and his rider after that performance. And, you know, it's not, it's not the only time that they've been so good. They jumped a double clear in Deauville. They already won a Grand Prix, uh, the four-star in Deauville, a different, different date but um, they looked very, very comfortable out there on day one. And so far, this, ho this course jumping well, but it's, it's really taking the horse and riders to stay, keep their concentration 
towards the end of the course. And that plank, that's the first victim on that plank. There you can see he, he ate the six and he's eating the five as well. Gets, he's able to get up the inside line, big striding horse. And for that, he got caught out on the plank because it was a steady seven after the triple combination. So there's really, there's something in there for everyone. The course, the course is really taking the riders to understand their horses and to understand what Santi wants from them in there today. Well, it was actually perfect down that last line where we've seen earlier combinations did not work out for them in the combination. How frustrating for Mariana Martinez Bastida because it was another great round, but it was one fence down, four faults, four spades. Yeah, he just came there on the outside track, and to be quite honest, you know, that the horses would look at the black plank in, in, instead of the white one. Uh, you, you can't understand it. The Netherlands have been victorious here three times on the big day on Sunday, both in 14, 17 and 2021. It won't be them on Sunday this time, but they're here tonight in the Challenge Trophy. And the first of their four is world number 24. It's Jevreeling with Long John Silva. Both those teams, 14 and 17, two of the teams victorious. Yeah, and you're in Long John Silver. They've really been stalwarts on the Netherlands team this year, jumping great rounds in St. Gallen in Rotterdam, to mention just a few. And Johnny, as his groom Emma calls him, is really a horse that you can depend upon. And he and you, they haven't been together that long but they really proved a great partnership. Because he had the back bar of the triple the other day and, and you was really disappointed about that. So Jos Lancy has sent him in early today. Quite often Jos keeps him as anchor rider. But I think just to get the spirits up again, the team send you in, see if he can get a clean sheet and that'll lift it for the others and keep them motivated. See how beautifully Jura just balances the horse, and look at this horse answering for him today. So he's just setting himself up for the triple bar. He wasn't going to have that down tonight, and of course he has to really slow down for this. Really set him up for that, adding come to make the six easy here, and the five he should be able to just pop up there and jump it. Beautifully done by this pair. Heading for home. Balancing to the triple without restricting. Nicely over the back bar, jumped it. Two to go. Keep the balance, your Up and over the oxer, just the lunging up right to go. Will this be our first clear? It is. That is a brilliant round from Jörg for the Netherlands. That's the start they wanted. And as you say, Jess, that will now really boost the rest of the team. Oh, there's no question. I think that was the whole idea of sending you in tonight. Jos had to think up a new plan. Uh, they were a little bit down in the dumps after the first day. And, you know, there's a, lot, there's a lot of money to win here tonight. This competition is too important not to take it seriously. And I think that uh, Jos's idea was get him in there, get, get a clear round. He knows that these two can deliver. Um, and then, you know, the others can, can be motivated and bring it up. I think it was tactically a very good move. So a brilliant round from Long John Silver and Gerv Reeling. Long John Silver, of course, equally good on the indoor circuit with the Longines World Cup series that will be coming up shortly. We move to Mexico, the defending champions for the Challenge Cup. And the first of their quartet, Eugenio Gahi Pare, with the 12-year-old gelding, Contego. Clear on the Thursday. If he jumps clear tonight, as well as being putting Mexico in a strong position, he will earn a bonus of 50,000 euros. Yeah, and you know what, Jure, he certainly will be one of those ones that deserves it because this combination have been stunning in the last months. I can't say it enough. Um, Ojinho and his lovely Contago, it really, uh, it really is um, an eyeful to watch them in the ring. And of course, I have to mention Marcelino, who presents this horse perfectly every time you see him. He looks happy and ambitious every time he comes in the ring. Just see beautiful leg position of the rider. I have to mention it's soft hands, balancing perfectly. Of course, this horse not not a horse with the longest stride, but he really has him, as we say, in front of the leg. He keeps staying, even though he's 
slows him down, he's able to keep going forwards. And we'll see now here, he moves up to the oxer, see how the five is for him. You can see he's able to just balance up on the five, beautiful. You can see that the flat work between these two is really fantastic. Lovely jump in, oh boy. Good boy, he's a little bit up the Two inside. To go. That suits him. This to be is up huge the for Mexico, and it's huge for Garcia Perez himself. If he can get over the last, he's got plenty of time. He's got 50,000 euros, and he's got to clear for Mexico. Well, what a great start for the defending champions of the Challenge Cup. Eugenio Garcia Perez and Contago make it a clear for Mexico and they're the only winners of the £50,000 bonus so he hasn't got to share it so Mexico and the Netherlands two with clears is just Australia that we haven't had their first rider because their first rider will be in the now in this next group because they only have three in the team Well, this young man, he's 19 years old, he's from Uzbekistan, and he has really come of age here in Barcelona. Abdurrahman Abdurrahman with Valor. The horse he's riding was individually 23rd at the Tokyo Olympics under Chris Knapp's Nerednicks, but Abdurrahman had a finished in the top three in the previous class this afternoon. Absolutely brilliant, he ridden. Yeah, and it's it's good to see. Well, it's actually interesting to see how they manage this horse between themselves. Of course, Kristaps Nerkny has been his trainer for a long time, and uh, he's now taken over riding Valor a little bit more. Of course, a young rider like this, uh, he just you could just see he wanted to set him up again. Again, another rider looking to avoid the mistake. But this is very typical for an inexperienced rider at this level of a championship. Instead of just keeping your rhythm and riding to the jump and letting the horse do his job at the jump, the rider tends to want to really help the horse over the jump. And at the end, when you get there, the horse jumps. He, it's his job to jump the jump. And of course, starting to gather up the, the mistakes at this stage, which is going to be a little bit heartbreaking for him tonight. But I think the general general feeling in the team is, is just keep going get your experience and this competition here is part of it comes down with the final two fences of the Rackman Abalev for Uzbekistan and beautiful down that last line he completes on 16 penalties but he will be able to go home and reflect on really competing with the greats in the previous classes after it was a 1 meter 50 class but they did extremely well but it's 16 volts for Abarakman and Valor for Uzbekistan Argentina were fourth in this competition 12 months ago. And this combination of Thomas Galilia and Vertigo WAF, they were in that team, so they're familiar with the surroundings here. They had a four faults from Leandro Moschini. Thomas Galilia for Argentina. And his groom, Jesus Arana, also doing a great job turning this horse out in great style. And Thomas had a little bit of a difficult moment, slightly misjudged at the water, day one. And I can tell you, Phil, I think uh, Chef to keep Alvis Tixaria, he will have had a few words to say. When I listen, he's a, he's a man really um, strong in his attitude to get success. He wants his riders to be really on the ball, and um, they are pushing now. They didn't get the qualification for the Pan Ams. They're not only pushing to get a good result here tonight, but they're pushing towards those Pan Ams to try and get one of those spots that's on offer. 
can see this horse with a slightly shorter stride. He was able just to just nicely balance him after the water jump. He didn't have to take him back too much, just kept a lovely rhythm, st measuring stride for stride. Again, lovely to see there. Good shots from the sky here. We have to thank the sky, sky cam that we can get these great shots. I think these are wonderful to see the length of the horse's strides and the point of takeoff, which the rider chooses depending on his horse's quickness or speed of takeoff. Two to go, still clear, 90 seconds of time allowed, plenty of time on the clock. Can he get the plenty of height over the last? Yes, he oh. can, no, he can't! Spoke oh. too soon, the last has gone. That was a superb round for Argentina until the last, but it was still a great round at just four folds, much improved from their round on Thursday. So four folds for Thomas Galilia and Vertigo Waff for Argentina. Two fours on the board. Martin Dabazzo will be their third line rider, replacing Mariana Ossa. That was... Oh, I mean, they've had two in the ring and two times four folds. It's, it's like an omen of what's to come. But I think he was maybe just, I don't know, you can see it in the replay, we haven't got a replay now, but he, perhaps he, you know, he got the front end over and he just thought he was home. Australia just fielding three members, so all three scores will count. They don't have the, the pleasure of a discard score. The first man in, former Olympic team bronze medalist, Christopher Burton. Chris Burton with Cheddington, Hazy, Tulana. Last year or so, really focusing on this sport as opposed to eventing. Christopher's a lovely rider. I watched him down in Oliver with all his horses. He really has them so well ridden on the flat and really, as we say, really on the leg. It means that when he uses his aids between his legs and his hands, that the horse really reacts and pushes from behind. And I think he would say himself there that he slightly misjudged. And uh, just he and Hazy Tulan are not finding their rhythm here today after I was boasting about how good he can do that. That was better. You can see Hazy Tulana just relaxing there between the leg and the hand. The first few fences, they just they just weren't one, just fighting a little bit. And this horse really was a talking horse as a youngster beautifully produced from the star professionals, Mark and Julia Holzhagen. And this horse, unfortunately, after that mistake, really jumping for Christopher this evening. Whoa. Four faults is still a good result if we can just keep it now. Uh, which indeed he does. Christopher Burton for Australia completes on four with Cheddington Hazy Tulana. Hilary Scott and Jamie Kerman to come, and that will be after the break. Australia, which is to say, just with the three riders. I think we can dare to say that was actually a great result for the three-man team. You could just see, we didn't see the lead-up to jump. That's that's what happened after the lead-up. But they came around the corner, and there was just, they're just not the, not the harmony between horse and rider. We now go to Italy. Alberto Zorze with the 11-year-old Dutch bred stallion, highlight W. 12 from Giorgio Bucci. Yeah, <laughs> Alberto said to me yesterday after Lorenzo had an unfortunate round as number one and he was going in as number two and he goes, oh, always me number two after something goes wrong, pressure. And, and now he has to follow up after the, the 12 rolls from PG. But he's... Uh, He's selling himself a little short, a fantastic rider, Alberto. It's great to see him back at the top leather. Fantastic that uh, Francisco Castellanos deciding to support him with these wonderful horses. And let's hope that that's a partnership that we're going to see for many years to come, supporting the Italian team and this great man, as uh, our owners really are the basis of our sport. And 
they really, 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 really should be thanked for their great, great, um, yeah, how can I say, support that they give all these wonderful riders. Lovely ride down to the plank. Just moves highlight up to this white oxer. Makes nothing of that five strides. Makes it look easy. And now you can see he just keeps that keeps the balance. Oh, and he gets caught out by that vertical. Again, highlight you could see on day one getting a little tired at the end of the course. And the same thing happening again. But with more experience, this will come. And the last has gone down 87.79 seconds the time, the 90 seconds the time allowed. So two down, eight faults for Alberto Zorzi and Highlight W for Italy. Manuel Camilli, Giampiero Garofoli to come. Giampiero Garofoli going as anchor, replacing Lorenzo De Luca. comes to the last jump there and you can just see Highland really doesn't get enough push off the ground to get the height. Well, a little bit of an extra cheer around the arena here at the Real Club de Polo, right in the centre of the city of Barcelona because it's Alberto Marque Galbaris with Aldo Dumanois. Didn't jump on first, he replaces Carolina Acusa Garcia Obregón. And this pair have had a good campaign jumping on the EEF series this year, jumping at all three Nations Cups that have been in jumping clear rounds for the team. And uh, they've been brought in now today to replace Caroline and Dom Perignon. Dom Perignon not feeling comfortable in the arena here at all. So Alberto being brought in. Getting catching a few this one. Those first four four jumps really set up there to get them into it, but the water mat is always a little bit under the lights, it can be deceptive. Oh, it really really set him up for that. You can just see Aldo de Momois very careful. Not a horse with the biggest stride. He's able to come on the seven, keep coming on the six, and you better keep coming on the five. Good man, well ridden. You just see Aldo de Mamoir pulling down a little bit, and Alberto did well there just to keep his, get his head up, keep his body weight behind, keep it low. What a round. A great round. Spain post their second four fault. Just one mistake on each of the first two rounds. Four faults for Alberto Marque, Ganabalis, and Aldo du Manoir. Santiago Nero Riva, Eduardo Avera Arzna will be there for the final two riders. So one of those fours, as you can see in that graphic, if you can see the graphic, will need to be counted. But four faults around this track, Jess, is a good round. Yeah, that was a very solid round. And, um, you know, that was just a question of balance, the mistake he had. But that, that's a combination for the future for the Spain, and I, I feel really happy for them. They've, they've had a few of their horses sold, and they need to, to rebuild. We've had a great clear from Joao Vreeling with Long John Silver for the Netherlands. Now their second-line rider replacing Harry Spolders, Kim Emmon with In Flame Go, In Flame Go, 10-year-old Dutch bread gilding. Baza here with Kim and In Flame Go. And of course, this pair got really the opportunity of being the fifth rider on the team at the Europeans in Milan with the new rules this year for the first time, the fifth rider can compete as an individual. And I think uh, Jos Lansing really give these two a great opportunity to jump their first championship. And certainly for Kim, it was fantastic looking towards Olympics next year to have had a championship underneath her belt. 
and this horse is still a young horse. Its owner, Eric Berkhoff, found him jumping at a national show in Holland and was so taken by him, he said, I better, better have this guy in my spring, string. And they've really grown this year. As you can see, it's a, hor it's a horse with Olympic scope. And Kim really has, as you can see there, she's worked just to get this really big horse closing and trying to be able to close him that he still keeps pushing from behind. That's the job with a big horse like this, to shorten him up in those distances without losing the power. And certainly it's looking like that trip to Milan did this to the world of good. This and is this could do the world of good for the Dutch team. Two to go. Oh! oh. <gasps> Jump it. And hardly a touch. The lightest to touch since four faults. The penultimate fence down for Kim Emmen and in flame go. Four faults for the Netherlands and clear and four. So the Dutch team will engraver Michael van der Breuten to come. Certainly from my point of view, looking at that round, I could see how much experience the two of them had gained from Milan. Certainly from the point of view of the team this evening, it was very disappointing, but uh, looking forward, it was a, a very, very good, good round. Mexico had a great clear from Eugenio Gazapare, now replacing Federico Fernandez. It's Fernando Martinez Seme with the 11-year-old gelding, high five. Fernando lives in Europe and has been competing a lot on the circuit here. Hasn't had very many appearances, or has only had one appearance on, on the team this summer as he's been busy competing in other competitions, but on that appearance he was very impressive, jumping for a time fault and a zero. So he's got the call up here now for the Mexicans, wanting to really get him into the fold looking towards the Pan Am Games. He really is a vital rider for the team. Has a lot of experience and high five or hifo as Sana calls him, his groom, really is a horse that is a bit of a clear iron machine. Sit up. Yeah, he came really snake down there on that seven and really had to back up and jump out over that vertical this first distance the seven should be okay for him oh jumped only the black plank there's a white plank above it you've got to jump that one too so the mexicans had a clean sheet now but let's see if he can come home with four an untypical mistake for this combination. Uh, nicely over the last two, the Oxa and the Lodgian upright, so but completes on that eight fault. So Mexico with a clear from Gaza Perez, and now Martinez Soma has eight faults. And that completes the second line riders for each of the teams and the first line rider for the three-membered Australian team. And so we'll just get an update as to where we are at this sort of halfway stage before we go into a maintenance break in the arena. Of course, the, all these teams have a discard score. So at the moment, you just look at just one score of each of their riders as opposed to the two riders that have gone. That shows you what a beautiful evening and what an incredible club this is, the Royal Cup de Colo. They have over 10,000 members here. And the polo field, which is only just about 100 metres away from it, is the largest green space in the centre of Milan. And this is that is the party area for this week. And Phil, if, if I understand correctly, the, f the party field, the polo field, which is so beautiful. You can see the lights in the background. It's so beautifully decorated. Sorry, Phil. That's OK. We've got the Netherlands and Mexico joint leaders at the moment at the halfway stage, both with the clear. Spain on four, along with Argentina and Australia. Italy on eight and Uzbekistan on 16. That's the seven teams at the halfway stage of the Challenge Cup, the Longin FEI Challenge Cup on the Saturday of the Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup final. 
Well, as you can probably see, we go in, we'll go, the tractors are in. We'll enjoy some highlights. We'll be back at 9.21.45, 9.45, local time in Barcelona. Brilliant round and our first clear of the night. How did it feel? Yeah, very good. I think Long John jumped really fantastic. Uh, it's only a little bit embarrassing that we are not in this final. Now, you mentioned not being in the final and obviously that was a little bit disappointing for the team, but how special is it to be jumping under the floodlights in Barcelona? Uh, you here it's really great, it's unbelievable, the, the crowd is really nice, but uh, the place here is amazing. I think this is the best outdoor show there is in the world. Now, lastly, I have to ask you, as Pathfinder for the team, what information do you take back and pass on to your teammates from your round? Well, I did uh, eight to the plank. This should have been seven. I thought it was a little bit short, but it wasn't. Um, so there are a few little tips I'm going to give them. Your congratulations, and we wish the best for your team for the rest of the night. Thank you very much, and uh, well, we tried to win this final. Thank you. Wow, an incredible result there. Double clear and winners of the bonus. How does that feel? It feels great. Uh, Contago was absolutely spectacular both days. I'm just really happy with him. Really happy to be able to uh, come through for the team. And uh, yeah, the, the added bonus is a, is a nice uh, cherry on top. And first to go for the team, obviously you're looking to defend the Challenge Cup title. What would that mean and what information did you pass back to your teammates? Yeah, definitely we might have wanted to do one better than last year. Uh, unfortunately, that wasn't the case, and today we, we're looking to bounce back. Um, we have a strong team, and uh, yeah, the, the course is, is pretty tall, uh, wide, so just told my teammates, you know, as we walked it, and, uh, you know, best of luck. And lastly, it's very special here under the floodlights in Barcelona. Do you feel that when you're riding that course? Yeah, absolutely. It's great atmosphere. Uh, being in Barcelona, always is a treat. And um, it's been a, a fantastic week so far. Hopefully, we'll, we'll continue on that trend. Congratulations. Well done and good luck.
Welcome back to the beautiful Barcelona Arena at the Real Club de Polo. The Netherlands and Mexico both with a clear in the Challenge Cup tonight at the halfway stage. Spain, Argentina and Australia on four faults. Italy on eight and Uzbekistan on 16. There are two riders now left to go each from each of those nations. Mexico are the defending champions from 12 months ago, but the Netherlands are not handing it over on a plate. That is for sure. And um, let's just, Jess, we're going to have one more look at the course animation. Take us through it, Jess. Thank you, Phil. That's great. Well, as we saw, jumping from number one, you can take eight strides or nine, the majority taking nine strides. And uh, Santi really bringing them smoothly into the class and uh, roll back to the water at number four, that Liverpool underneath, under the lights, causing a few problems. And then we have the first 160 vertical of the competition before they turn down to the first more demanding line, the water at three meters 90. Just need to make sure they did a good, good jump over that. And the graphics then showing seven strides. For the majority, it's seven slightly waiting strides. Some horses with a shorter stride can just come down there on seven, but they've got to really back off inside and get out and jump that vertical at one meter 58. This line, one meter 90, one meter 55 high. It's exactly seven strides to those planks. Some will take one stride more six and a half and five and a half here these two distances but the five and a half that five can get long because it's an open turn and the riders have to watch that they haven't got their horses too flat and out of balance before coming to this delicate not too high it's 155 coming in 152 160 wide and there you can see it's 1150 coming out and there the horses can get a little bit on the forehand before this open six to the short four and that's where coming home when the horses are getting a little tired the riders have to be careful that they don't get a silly mi mistake through losing their balance onto the forelegs. As in Tolibair with Quintus will get us underway for Uzbekistan. We also have Hilary Scott and Oaks Milky Way in there for Australia. Santiago Nino Riva Chikira. They had just one fence down on Thursday and, and a clear from them would really boost Spain's chances. And then the last of the third line riders, Jose Antonio Cherogo Eguea for Mexico. The anchor riders get us underway with Nurjan Toge off with Lancelotti for Uzbekistan. Jamie Kerbon's in there. Guillaume Pira Garofolo for Italy replaces Lorenzo De Luca. Michael van der Bluten is the penultimate rider in the arena with Boval Z. They've won here before. He's world number 15. And last in will be Nicolas Pizarro with Pia Contra for Mexico. What's it? I'm just going to say, Jess, the atmosphere of coming down in that dark funnel. You come down the hill, then the, suddenly it's spotlights everywhere. What's that like? Absolutely. I mean, luck luckily the lights are, are shining bright in the polo field on the way down from the stables, where quite far away, so the horses have a lovely quiet. The warm-up arena is very bright lights. It's just that little dark trip, and I think, to be quite honest, for the riders, it's, it's worse than for the horses, because you've got such an entourage coming with you. And uh, yeah, it's it's a pensive moment. Third line riders, first of the seven in the Challenge Cup. Azem Tolibier with Quintus HB. 12-year-old Hanoverian gelding. Uzbekistan. Winners of the Nations Cup in the Kyrgyzstan. And here jumping at one of the biggest, most important competitions they've ever competed in. Yeah, that, oh, mistake and number one. There's a lovely saying, mistake and number one is a rider's mistake. I think that's a little bit easily said. Mistake and number one could be for many reasons, just like you say, Phil, that, that pensive moment coming from the practice arena with an awful lot of people around you. It's a big moment. Um, and this pair, they haven't been together very long. Previously ridden by Nano Hilly, who rides for Hilmar Meyer in Germany, and they only took over. He only took over the reins in February. And you can just see a little bit the trouble still trying to get to know each other. And uh, as I'm just sometimes finding that it's difficult to get Quintus round, as we say, on the jump. The Quintus tends to just jump like you can see just there. He jumps up in the air 
and doesn't finish over the back and that's that's quite difficult for a rider then to be able to as you can see there just unable to give the hands I mean, of course, these, these are the things we want to avoid for young riders coming into a championship, or not young riders, but inexperienced combinations coming into a championship like these. The, these are the moments we want to avoid, but that's part of the sport. And, uh, you know, when you have a round like this and, and you have a stop like that, and you basically would like a, to find a big hole and, and crawl into it and just close it. But uh, out of these moments they grow. You can just see he jumps, the water puts a foot in the water, and... Um, after that, then he had a difficult moment on the combination, jumping really, really straight. And of course, then when Azam touched him, basically with his hands, then of course Quintus didn't want to do it. And yeah, okay, bad day for these two. Back to the stables, back to Ola. He'll look after you, regroup, and uh, new day. This is this is a growing time for this team. We've to seen other teams coming here on a few occasions to grow, and this is where Uzbekistan is at the moment. Uzbekistan, then, that's an elimination for Azam Tolibam and Quintus HB for their third-line rider. And you can see the popularity here in Spain. Not a spare seat around international show jumping arena there's 10 shows they hold here the, each year throughout the year they have two in december two international shows here at the rail club de polo we now move on to argentina they've had two good rounds just a fence down on each and now it's martin de panzo he comes in to replace mariana Oso, and he's with bm always Mark de Pazzo, he is no stranger to competition like this he's been a member of the team and really always has been a very good professional rider has brought many horses to the top level and they were hoping to save him for the final now they've saved him for the challenge cup but of course this is a finding process for them now direction pan am games they've got two riders and four faults if they can post a clear round with martin they really are back in the hunt we really have to look at the, the countries which are getting a clear round at this stage. Argentina may not be a nation who's perhaps recognised at this level all the time, but they were finished second in one of the launching qualifiers to get here. One, only one point behind Belgium and ahead of Germany and France. Yeah, but I think really uh, Argentina, Argentina is a country that really is a result of competitions like this Nations Cup, like this Nations Cup final. They've really built up over the last years, and I say yet again many thanks to Jose Larocca, who has really invested not only in himself and the sport of himself and his son um, and his daughters also, but he's also supported other riders on the team, and they really are a force to be reckoned with, and we will see much more of them in the future. But not tonight, Phil. No, they've got two fours, so they'll hope to discard the score of Martin Del Pazzo, and that completes on 16 penalties. 90 seconds, the time allowed, and we haven't seen the 90 seconds affect the rounds at all, Jess, at this stage, have we? No, I think Santiago does a very, a very, very good job with his time. He knows when to use the time, and he knows when to just let the time out of the picture, and uh, he has such a good, fine feeling of knowing exactly when to use that. And I think that's it's underrated by many people. You know, the, the course builder is a little bit between an architect and an artist, as I say, they, they have to have very fine feeling. And indeed, it is Jose Maria La Roca Jr. who will be their anchor rider in, in a few moments' time. It's rider number two of the three for Australia. The best of their rounds on Thursday. It's Hilary Scott with the wonderful 16 year old mayor, Oaks Milky Way. Hilary Scott and Oaks Milky Way, homebred, lovely mare. And they've really had quite a bit of exposure to five-star level over the years and very experienced at this stage and have been able to pull out the clear eye on various occasions. And if they could do that now, Phil, this would really put this three-man team in the hunt tonight to be not only on the podium but uh, giving the Netherlands a run for their money.
Yes, because they've just got that fourth one fence down from Christopher Burton. Hillary lives in France with her pair of running stuff on. And I commented the first day, and I'll comment it again, how fit this horse was when I saw him out in the morning for work see really the muscle on that hind end. You can really see the outline of the muscles as she canters round. And lovely to see that, you know, this girl puts the effort in to make sure that her partner is trained like an athlete. This is a deciding line for this pair. Ooh, get that hind end up. Five gets a little flat. Now she has to watch that. Five got a little flat and it's just been dragging the hind end slightly. So be very soft with the hands here. Sit up. Come Brilliant. on, bring Through it home. The, combination. the Oxer. Sit up. Just the upright. What a superb clear for Australia. That has kept the three rider team well in contention here. Just the one fence down from Christopher Burton, now clear from a delighted Hilary Scott and Oaks Milky Way. And she should be delighted. She gave that horse such a good run, supporting when needed to be supported, and just letting Milky Way get on and do her job when that was the right moment. And fair play to Groom Anna. Great job, well done, girl. Australia. We've got Jamie Kerman with his great partner Yandu Oaks coming in later. Just four on the board. Now to Italy. Emmanuel Camilli with Odense Modebelt. Just a nine year old. Gelding by Diamond de Semi. Emmanuel and Odevents had such a good campaign in Milan for their team. And great rounds in Falsterbo, jumping double clear, another clear round in Sopot for the team. Disappointed slightly on the first day. I think he, he'd accept that himself, that it was not not the round that we've seen from this two. Odevents just jumping a little forward, not keeping the body weight behind on takeoff. Oh! <gasps> Dear. I tell you, this trainer's going to have a word to say about that. Just getting too quick up to the water last stride was too short. And Odense not having a chance to stretch for the water. And look at this horse jumping today. They've really found the right level of freshness today, perhaps too fresh on day one. But this horse really backing up, showing his scope today. And the last. Well, it's clear jumping, but a foot in the water. So the 3.9 meter water gives them. That's the four faults on the board for Emmanuel Camilli and Odets Odebelt. So they have to keep the eight from Alberta Sorze and now the four from Camille. Yeah, very clear to see there that the last stride just wasn't long enough and then the horse putting a foot back. That was a really cheap mistake. Horse jumping fantastic and Manuel giving him a good a good ride. Yeah, when there's a worm in, in the team, there's a worm in. Barcelona and they support all the teams, but it'll be a special hello for Santiago Nilo Rive and Shakira Z. They've had two good rounds, they both had a fence down, but they've only had three clears so far in the whole competition, so four faults is a very respectable round. Spain already have just two on four. 
Santiago and Shakira jumped a very, very good round. Just having a mistake going into the double on day one. They're coming here with good results. They were ninth in the big Grand Prix from Gijon. It's rated four star, not five star, but it's a big Grand Prix. Wonderful venue in Gijon. You can just see he was working very hard, getting a little deep. Again, you can see coming around the corner, another rider that's really setting up to avoid the mistake. And as soon as you start to set up to avoid the mistake, they're gonna start coming. You've gotta get into your flow, trust, trust the horse to jump, trust yourself to ride the, ride the distance. You can't pick him up and carry them over. front view, but just looking from the front view, getting it a little bit too deep. Perhaps the pressure getting to Santiago. Two riders and one fence down. He desperately wanted to post a clear to put the team back in the hunt. So 16 on the board, the last two fences, no problem with those, but it is the 16 they have to carry with them. So Santiago Nuno Riva and Shakira Z for Spain, 16 volts. They'll hope that that could be their discard score with a four from Mariano Martinez Bastida and a similar from Alberto Marquez and Eduardo Alvera Aznar to come. Slightly on the ang angle there, changing the balance in the air. Well, look, this man was on the Sunday winning team back in 2021. He's 78 in the world rankings. He had a good round with just one fence down on Thursday. It's Will and Graham with Highway TN for the Netherlands. Clear from Will and Graham. Would put a lot of pressure on the remaining teams. Absolutely, this is a very important round for the whole competition. Of course, not just for the slightly embarrassed uh, Dutch team, but uh, for the entire competition. And of course, this combination have jumped so many good rounds and have been in such great form. Second in the Grand Prix in Falsterbo, clear in four in the Nations Cup, first in the Grand Prix of Rotterdam, uh, double clear in the Nations Cup, 10th individual uh, in Mannheim. I mean, should I say more? The form is amazing. And it just needs to come at exactly the right moment. And this is the moment that if he could just jump the clear for the Netherlands, the pressure is going to be so strong on Mexico. Oh, I think he was in the water. Yes, the board's gone up. Oh, no. I mean, the Netherlands is a country with a lot of water. Always a bit of a cheap mistake. And under the floodlights, of course, the water does take on a slightly different role as it does in daylight. Oh, this horse jumping so good. But stay with the four. Come on, Willem. Stay calm. Bring it home. You never know, the four could still be enough to win this competition. This horse really giving everything. Balance. Just the last to go. And brilliant over the last. So clear jumping, just the foot in the water for the Netherlands. So a clear from Javrilink. And two fours from Kim Emmett, and Will and Graham. And they have Michael van der Vloten with Bobel Z as their anchor rider. They were victorious here in 21. He came really well down to the water, but I think if you ask Willem, he might just say he was a little bit far off. The 
last of the third line riders. They were anchor rider for Mexico on Thursday. Now the third line rider, Jose Antonio Chedrao Aguilla with H. Lucky Retta. Eleven year old Dutch bred mare. Well, this is certainly a very, very important round for them. This is the make or break round for them. They got one clear, one and eight. They really, really need to get that clear round now to keep them in the hunt. This pair had a foot in the water and a mistake on the oxer in the shadows the first day. He's got those two out of the way, wants to get a little bit of his rhythm now. Just keep rolling. background the kiss and cry there's a lot of nervous Mexicans up there okay give him now a good ride to this water come on give him a good ride support him head up and kick got it balance good man. he's jumped a lot of clear irons nations cup competitions this year for the team the Mexicans they're all riding with him it's, oh careful now careful good man this horse is really really responding oh he's dropping his shoulder to the inside he's got to keep him balanced here and he's out of the combination still clear for Mexico just the one to go plenty of time on the clock Hop. he's up and over the long and upright and they're clear that has kept Mexico right in the hunt as defending champions of the Challenge Cup. What a round from Jose Antonio Chedra Aguilar and H. Lucky Reto. Well, Phil, I can tell you that was the first goosebump moment of this evening. Now it's started to hot up in here. What a great round. What, and this horse responded. This lovely 11 year old mare groomed by Juan and she responded the more they went through the course the more she got up and jumped what a lovely lady this is so they are the only team at this point that could end on zero but there's still a lot of sport still to come we go back to uzbekistan Nurjan Tiagbiv with Lancelotto. Individually 29th the World Cup final earlier in the year. Yeah, they had a great campaign at the World Cup final, Phil. And uh, just taking a little bit easy, as I said the other night, since then, coming back. They've now got one big round under the belt from the first day and just see if they can emulate a little bit what they were showing us they can do out in the States earlier this year. Oh, a flat jump. I think he got over it. That's a lot of very, very talented mare with great ease. Oh, he's gone out a bit. He has to move up for that. <sighs> Gets it. Now he's going to have to balance her. Now he's going to have to make sure that he just keeps that body short. Don't get too flat jumping in here. Oh. Yeah, that was a problem. He got dragged out to the skinny one and got, got flat. Oh, what a good round from this combination. 
A superb round for Uzbekistan, the, that's the cleanest round that they have had over this wonderful Nations Cup competition. So just the one fence down, four faults for Nolan Duyangbev and Lancelotta for Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan complete their campaign in the Challenge Cup. What a great way to finish, Jess. Oh, fantastic. But there you could really see a class mare, a great combination. They had a quiet summer. They just needed to get around under the belts to get back into it. And I'm very happy to see the two of them jumping such a great round to finish. Well, we often find ourselves with the anchor rider as being an absolutely pivotal round for a team. And that, of course, is the nature of the London FBI Nations Cup series, the brilliance of the format, because this round is very critical for Argentina. It's Jose Maria La Roca Jr. with Finn Lente, and a clear keeps them on just eight faults. Absolutely. Which and keeps them right in the hunt. Absolutely, and Chef to keep Alves Tixera himself a very, very successful rider. He will have told Jose, you know what you have to do. And um, this pair are well up to it. And Jose is a very ambitious man. He's cool, he's calculated, he's sensitive. He's experienced, and Finland is a superstar. And if I don't give them the commentator's curse with that, Phil, I don't know what will. So I really wish them the best of luck. But My resume. No, but this this combination, uh, really, they've done so many, so many great rounds. And you know, he also doesn't with business and with everything. He also doesn't get so much opportunity to, to compete like a top professional would every week at five star level. And uh, I mean, he recently came second in the Grand Prix in Brussels, and that was against the best in the world. And as you say, a clear round could just keep them right up in the hunt. They'll be fighting for the win if he can jump clear. He gets dragged out, had to move up, responded very well. Very good piece of course building from Sunday, I have to say it over and over again. Super building. And you can just see that Jose tried to set him up there. Oh, and that was really costly. Everybody that's got dragged out on the skinny oxer is paying at the combination. And they will have to count that one fence down. So it is three riders on four faults for Argentina. Jose Maria La Roca Jr. in Finland. On four, puts them on a total of 12 faults, Argentina. They complete 12. As we keep a close eye on how this is unfolding as the anchor riders take us to the sharp end of this competition. That is what Jamie Kermont that's his job for Australia. Great four from Christopher Burton and even greater clear from Hilary Scott. Jamie Cowan now with Yandu Oaks Constellation. Yeah, I feel no pressure. <laughs> um, Jamie's, Jamie's a, he's a cool character. He, he, he knows the job, he's, he's a professional. He's been around a long time and he's jumped so many good rounds for his country. And he certainly knows Yandu. He certainly, he certainly does. And uh, his mistakes at the end of the course on the first on the first day, he jumped really a super round up to that. So he'll be looking to keep a little bit more of the concentration in the last line. And of course, if he, if he does manage to jump clear, the pressure is on really extremely. I mean, go in the Netherlands. Yeah, but I actually think if he goes clear, the only ones that could actually beat him is, is Mexico. I mean, it's it's that close. Pensive looks. Big striding horse should get this fight easy. That's it. 
now he just has to keep him balanced. He hasn't had to open him as some have had to do before. So keep him balanced and trust him, and then you better lift him over the last two. Right, Jamie, this is up to you now. Stomach muscles. Lift him, boy. Lift two him up. Lift him. Just the upright. What a round! <laughs> One and a half seconds inside the time allowed, but that doesn't matter because he is clear well. Australia, who have fielded <laughs> just a team of three, complete on four faults. I love the look of shock on his face. <laughs> I mean, he's maybe just jumped, jumped the winning round of the Challenge Cup here in Barcelona, and the, the look in his face. <laughs> See if he's a, li a little kid at his first gym gymkhana. <laughs> Well, well done, and we you must two. say something about about uh, Yandu Oates' consolation. 17 years oh, old, looking fantastic. Absolutely. Probably just jumped one of the most important rounds in life. No, absolutely. I mean, I was just terribly trying to stay very calm, but what a horse. I mean, what a, oh, this is fantastic. And you know what? The Dutch, they're done and dusted. They can only match Australia's score on four faults. That's right. All they can do. That's right. And Mexico... Of are be, in it to win it. Could be, they're in it to win it, that's it. So we could actually still be looking at the jump off here tonight. Gian Piero Garofalo with Gaspar for Italy. He's replaced Lorenzo De Luca here as anchor rider. That's right. Being kept on, on the fringe on the first day. Lorenzo having an unfortunate rhyme being moved out. But it maybe was their plan anyway. This pair of really been having a great season jumped a clear round for the team in Hickstead and a second in the Nations Cup or oh, sorry in the Grand Prix in Lichterford it was a three star third in the Grand Prix in lovely show in Oman got a clear in the Nations Cup in Gorla and of course his his trainer is here um, Hank Norn Gampiero's partner, Hank Norton's daughter, so he's certainly got some great adv advice on his side and some great support. And a rider that has really come up through the ranks now in the last years. Came in really at an angle there. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Completes on four. So, Italy, Gianpiero Garofolo, Gaspar, four faults, leaves them on a total of 16. So, an incredible story. We've got Australia with just three riders in the clubhouse with four faults. And that will be some story. Well, that certainly would be some story, and we're not too far away from it. The other teams had a lot of jumping to do, they do. before they can match that, Phil. So now we go to last man for Spain. Team were fifth at the recent European Championships of the first week of September. Eduardo Avare Aznar with Dorian Batty. Edo really the backbone of the French team for a few years now producing yet again a new horse up to the top level. Dory Batali, 10 years old, has really had the opportunity to slip in behind his top horse this, sum this summer, gain experience, and now it's his turn to move up. Day one, didn't have his best round, but I think Perhaps, oh, he was deep there, oh, Ooh, he was deep. Another one that pays a penalty for having the last stride too short. But 
they are really giving him a very sympathetic ride today. He knows the horse can only do his best, what he's ready for at this point, pressure or no pressure. And this man just allowing the horse to jump underneath him. You can just see he's not trying to force the jump, not trying to stop him having a mistake. Just trying to keep the balance, present the horse as good as he can to the jump and let him get the job done. The inexperience still showing through, but this is a much better ride than the first day. And you heard the oohs and the ahs from the packed crowds here around the arena in Barcelona. The Real Club de Polo said that was a completion on eight penalties, leaving Spain matching the score of Italy on 16 as they complete their challenge for the Longin FBI Challenge Cup here on day two of the competition of the Longin FBI Jumping Nations Cup final. Tenth year that it's been held here in Barcelona. Tomorrow, the top eight battle it out for the big money and the big trophy. Now, winners back here in 2021, and that was on the Sunday, this combination. Michael van der Vloyt, Bo Vilzet. What's the second line rider now coming in as anchor? Lost that seat, Chef to keep looking pensive. I just turned away. <laughs> He was on the, not of course, but he was on the winning team here for Belgium a few years ago. A clear from Michael van der Bloyten keeps the Netherlands on four, matching Australia. And piles the pressure on Nicolas Pizarro for Mexico. Absolutely. And Michael van der Floyten, Boville Z, NOP. Um, I think this pair have done some pretty amazing things before, so uh, jumping, jumping the clear iron tonight is certainly within their capabilities, but we know how it goes in these competitions. It's a long way to go yet. Come on, Michael. And of course, like you said, Phil, he's not riding for the win yet. He's riding to match the Australians to possibly go into a jump off if the Mexicos, if the Mexicans have a, even a fence down. They would, if they have a fence down, then it would all be three-way jump off. It's now getting very exciting. Michael didn't have his, his personal best round on Thursday, but there you go, boy. That doesn't happen twice to the top jockeys. Beauville, a horse that tends to jump a little bit to the side, but it's sometimes more extreme than others. Oh, Michael had to work hard there. Yeah, no, he really, you can see he really had to shorten up because he's going up the inside. Beauville, that's it already. You can see the experience that these two have. Michael was able to just turn Beauville a little in the air over that wide oxer to make the five strides easy and balance, balance, very good. This is looking good, Phil. Come on, this Michael. This combination, I've done it again. Well, Michael wasn't complimentary about their team's performance on Thursday, not surprisingly, <laughs> but he will be very delighted with his Olympic medalist, Bobil Z, tonight, because that clear puts them matching the score of Australia. So, I think you said at the beginning of the round, we've seen this, these two do some fantastic rounds, both indoors and out, World Cups, Nations Cups, Olympic Games, and they've done it again. I just love it how the top combinations, when the pressure's on, they can just rise to the moment. It's so wonderful to see. Defending champions from 12 months ago fill the kiss and cry area because this round could not be more pivotal and important to Mexico. Nicolas Pizarro with Pia Contra 
for Mexico. He was second line rider, now he's anchor rider. He's the leading Mexican rider in the world. A clear gives them back-to-back -back victories. One fence down, a three-way jump off. Two fences down, a jump off between the Netherlands and Australia. Now, Pierre Conta really jumped great on day one. Just had a mistake going into the double, but I think Nicholas would say himself he was just a little bit close there. So the form is certainly there that they can do it. Nicholas is a jockey. He knows what he's doing. He's got great experience. Super rider. And Pia Contra is really a fantastic mare. Oh, oh. no. Oh, and she jumped God. it. Oh, she's such a good girl. Oh, come on. Come on, girl. Look at that, Phil. I tell you, when you need a good woman, she's there. I tell you. So, stay calm. Oh, oh no. It's gone. Oh, no, it's over. Mm. Yeah, it's all just getting. Oh, it was just getting too much. But look at this mare fighting to jump. Oh, no, it's gone. Oh, no, it's over. It's over for Mexico. Oh, what a shame for the Mexican team. And beautiful over the last two fences, but the eight faults will have to be counted. So, what a great campaign for Mexico. They were the defending champions of the Challenge Cup. It wasn't to be for them tonight. So, Nicolas Pizarro, Pia Contre for Mexico complete on eight, and they have to count those eight faults. So, they go into the clubhouse on eight faults. Ah, oh, that was painful. So, that is confirmation that Mexico are on the podium in third place. But it is not over yet, because once again, the drama in the Rail Cup de Polo is unfolding in front of our eyes, as Australia and the Netherlands complete, both on four faults, go head to head in a jump off. Mexico third on the podium with eight faults. 12 faults for Argentina and 38 faults for Uzbekistan. Well. So they prepare the course now for the jump off. And we'll have an opportunity to go through that. Of course, outside now, they will be preparing both teams for that jump off. And we will be told as soon as as soon as the knowledge is there, that the riders that the Schefter keeps have chosen to come in and jump, and we'll let you know as soon as well. We may not know until we actually see one come into the arena. And here we go with the course. It starts down with the new jump, number 15, right-handed towards the in-gate. Then they've got to go around that number 14. It would be very, very tight to go inside. It is Oxer, and then it's a gallop up to what was number two. There's a very risky eight strides up there. I'm not sure they'll take it. Spin back, two, three. As it was, there's nothing to do. Just get back as quick as possible. And then back up to number 11, that skinny Oxer. So it's again, it's a question of just cantering and tight. Then it's AB of that triple combination. It was hard to jump in the first round, but they'll be turning tighter now. And then it's a very, very long run down to that last jump. It's so far that I didn't walk the distance, but I can tell you when they come down to there, they're going to have to really sit back and get the front end up. It's the Saturday night of the Longin FEI. The Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup final. It's the Challenge Cup. Santiago Gavarela is the course designer. And what a fantastic job he has done. So we have a jump off between the Netherlands, three times winners of the big day on Sunday. That would have been tomorrow the Netherlands have been, but tonight they're now battling to actually have victory in the Challenge Cup. And what a fantastic performance from the three rider team from Australia.
So now we know Australia will jump first, followed by the Netherlands. One rider from each team will come forward for the jump off. We'll just wait to see who is chosen. Yeah. I'm just waiting to hear. I've got spies I down. Can see you spies down I can in see the practice you. arena. So come on. I can see you texting away yeah. there. Texting away. I need that information quick here. We're sitting up here in our little house. And uh, there we go. It's Richard Burton for sure. Richard Burton, <laughs> he's an actor. <laughs> Christopher Burt. <laughs> My. I have to laugh when you're getting information and the person who's writing the information is not used to writing messages. And it's <laughs> I couldn't quite identify the second name there. So we have Burton and Graver. Will and Graver. Yeah. So that's going to be exciting. So Australia to jump first. They're jumping for the Challenge Cup here on the second of the three days of competition at the Nations Cup final. Christopher Burton, Cheddington, Hazy, Tulana. Will and Graver, Highway, Tien. Jumping in that order. I think that's on both teams, actually. A very, very good choice. Uh, Christopher... Just we wait, we wait for the... That is jump off to unfold. We'll just watch some highlights from the earlier rounds this evening. Jess, can we just whilst we just, I want to just quickly ask you about the combination. The, that first fence going into the combination probably caused more trouble than any other fence on the course. Was that the approach to it? What was the what was the situation? It was a little bit of a knock-on effect. Uh, Santi made use of very long lines this evening. Um, at the, he started off getting the riders very comfortable, just rolling around jumps, no related distance, getting them comfortable. Then he stretched them on the water, he backed them up in the combination, and then he hit them with the triple bar, uh, then s slowed them down to the plank, stretched them to the big oxer, and then he slightly disorientated them to the skinny oxer with his open-ended five and a half strides, as I would call it, a long five strides. And uh, in doing that, those ri horse rider combinations who were not able to get up to that uh, skinny oxer in a balanced, closed way they basically came around the corner of the triple combination and the only way they were able to balance their horse was from front to back so from from the hands and then of course the power was gone for the horses to jump up and uh, it was really a clever piece of course building an absolute knock-on effect and we were wanting to say earlier Phil <laughs> The polo field where you can see the beautiful fairy lights are hung over. It's a, such a wonderful atmosphere. We've sat out there now a couple of evenings. It's been very, very nice in the lovely, lovely evening air here in Barcelona. And already at five o'clock this evening, they had to close the field. There were so many guests out there just enjoying this. I mean, it's obviously got Ryan Barcelona that this is the place to be. Not only did they close it, Jess, I don't know if you saw, there was a queue probably three or four hundred metres long yes. people hoping to get into the polo Incredible. field. Incredible. In the polo field, there's there's games, there's actually a human Longines show jumping course that you can win Longines prizes. Oh, it's run around. It's a, a massive food food hall. Oh, it's, lovely. It's, it's, it's just, and it's so well managed, lovely deck chairs to sit. There's the lights, I mean, when it's dark, it's just, oh, it's so fantastic. The people are having a great time. You can go shopping if you want to, you can buy clothes, you can buy um, interior furniture, furnishings, like you say, you can go for a jump at the Longines uh, Arena, where I saw you down there at lunchtime having a little school, Phil. Um, I think you're not quite ready for this level yet. I mean, if I were you, I'd just keep at it next year. Foot in the water, uh, next unfortunately. Year. Next year, yes. Yeah, well, that was just the lights, don't worry. You'll be all right with that. We'll get you to stretch a bit more. No, but really, it's it's a very, very special, special place here in Barcelona. I mean, everybody comes back with great pleasure. And there you new can grandstand. see the lights. And the new grandstand. The new grandstand that is stunning. That grandstand on the far side, you can see the full length of it. That's all been built since the close of the show last year, 12 months ago. Yeah, they've made a huge effort here, the organisers in the club, especially looking towards the new FEI launching League of Nations next year, where this will be the final. 
um, the, for really upping the level of the Nations Cup Series. It's going to be a very big final here last year, next year. preparing the, the course and of course more importantly the horses that have now been brought to warm up for the jump off what will be happening in the practice arena now Jess the two riders will be up there they, did, they both jumped around tonight just a you know a couple of small jumps just a well that's that's basically it I mean um, the horses will. I mean, Richard Burton's horse. Okay, he was in the. He was, oh, Christopher sorry, Burton. Christopher Burton. I'm terribly sorry. But I've got something with Richard Burton, and to be quite honest, I didn't even quite like his films. So, sorry, Christopher Burton. <laughs> much, much better person. Um, so yeah, he his horse Hazy Tulana, who who jumped a stunning first round. Um, he'll have been just warming up. And uh, Willem Graver, he'll be just trotting around, warming up as well. And yeah, they'll make a few little pops, and then they'll walk a bit. Of course, there's always, you know, how long? How long is? That's the first question. How long between the rounds? The chef to keep finds out how much time there is, and uh, for sure the other riders there in at the jump with their colleagues, and um, just just basically getting getting ready to go in. They do a few jumps, walk a little bit, and then they'll probably have taller vertical before they go in. And obviously, for the second team coming in, which will be the Netherlands, they have a little bit the advantage on the way down that nasty dark tunnel walking down. On the way down, William Gravel will really have to focus and listen to what Jos is telling him or the designated person that Jos sent to watch Christopher Burton jump. Um, and because he'll be getting 50 people telling him, he made so many strides here and you've got to turn there and he was unbelievably fast and this and that. And he just has to focus on what the designated person says. Um, and basically um, listen to him himself. Uh, it's going to be an, an exciting, exciting pair off. Obviously, if Christopher can go clear, it will lay down the gauntlet to the Netherlands. And uh, this is what we're hoping. There's great pictures of that new VIP tribune. We were up there, Phil. It's a fantastic view that you have. The, and and the, there the is the ferry oh. lights towards the top of the screen. That is the polar field, there, the largest green space in the city of Barcelona. Yeah. Here we are. Now we're in the practice arena, watching the two riders warm up before the challenge cut jump off. Willem Graver there, Highland W, Highland TN, I should say, Highway TN. And you can just see him coming to the vertical there, having a little pop. Jos Lansik on the left. And here, Christopher going down together with Bessie, his groom. So, Hazy Tulana. The atmosphere around the Royal Club de Polo Arena is now electric. This man, team's bronze medalist in eventing, focusing on show jumping. Oh, what a job. It's Christopher Burton. He's in the jump off for Australia against the Netherlands. Cheddington, Hazy, Tulana jumping off for the Challenge Cup. And I've watched this man riding jump offs before. He's very quick. He's obviously got great rhythm using his eventing career to his advantage. And the way Hazy Tulana jumped in the first round, this jump off could be a cracker. We're underway. Christopher Burton, Chellington, Hayden Tulana for Australia. Picking up a good counter. That's it. There's no choice but to gallop around here. I wanted to get one less, so. Takes the nine strides, which is the distance. Gets a very good turn back here. This is spot on so far. A little bit cautious here, wants to get a tight turn back. That was well ridden. 
just keeping his hands as quiet as possible. He can't fight with her too much. He has to stay calm. Oh, oh no. He better get up and jump this last one or he's handed to them on a plate. And he has. It is the one fence down, but it looks like a quick time on 42.82 for Christopher Burton for Australia. So, one fence down, four faults, 42.82, Christopher Burton, Chennington, Hayden, Tilana for Australia. Door now, left open for the Netherlands. The door is certainly left open, but he was quick. He, he kept very close around the turns. It's not over yet. So, Jess, this plays on your mind now. Do I go quick and risk, or do I take it easy and hopefully have a fence down? It's 51 seconds of time allowed. I think, personally, in this situation, he's, he's, got, he's got to go for the time. Um, you can't just sit back and, and say, I'm going to jump a clear round. And I think the time, you know, it's not as if the time was so fast that you can't catch it. Well and grave. Highway TN for the Netherlands, jumping for glory in the Challenge Cup here at Longines FEI, jumping Nations Cup. And this is a very fast combination. They're not just a very good combination, they're a very fast combination. was very tight here. Willem matches it. So this is where Christopher took a little bit of time. Willem does the same. It's, it's close enough. All right, come on now, Willem. That's it. Down oh. to the last. He's done it! It's also a quick time, but the Netherlands take the Challenge Cup. Jos Lansing puts his arm around Richard Skillen, the groom of Highway TN. What tremendous seas. Well, what a tremendous performance from Australia. We must remind everyone they fielded a team of three. They did not have the luxury of a discard score and they have finished in the jump-off against one of the best nations in the world. I think, Phil, we have to give... We really have to say the Netherlands, you know, well-deserved winners, but a huge shout-out to Team Australia. Well done, guys, and what a motivation going towards the Olympics. Uh, uh, Jess, you're going to go down now and have a, have a chat with the Dutch team, are you? Thanks ever so much for being up here. Phil, it's been, as ever, a pleasure, and I can't wait to go down talk to the Dutch boys and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Speak Thank to you, you all very much. Bye. Well, what a tremendous evening once again as Barcelona has produced some of the greatest sport in this wonderful setting. As you can see on the Longines timepiece as Will and Greve jumps in, those times are accurate. It's about 20 to 11 at night, but beautiful temperature, superb competition. Great finale to the Challenge Cup. We heard Jerv Reeling in the interview at the halfway stage saying that they do feel slightly awkward that they weren't into the big final on Sunday. The Netherlands having been victorious here in 14, 17 and 21. But they've taken the Challenge Cup tonight and that's a very good consolation prize if that's what it is. So. The Netherlands and Australia battled it out in the jump-off. The Netherlands came out on top. Australia completed on the four faults. Mexico on eight, Argentina on 12. On one fence behind was Spain on 16, level with Italy, but Spain in fifth due to the time. And then Uzbekistan in seventh place. That's the seven teams. That's the, the final result of the Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup Challenge Cup on the Saturday of this win and let's just now remind ourselves of what happens next because the challenge cup is over but it, the competition itself has yet to really unfold because tomorrow is the final day 
of the Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup 2023. And the top eight nations will be battling it out for 1.25 million euros. And more importantly, the prestige of winning the Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup final. The competition in Spanish time, local time, is 1500 hours three o'clock tomorrow afternoon we'll be live here to cover that event and remind ourselves that after the first round on thursday great britain who were the only team to complete on zero penalties on thursday will be the last to jump on sunday and the teams in reverse order for the top eight on Sunday whilst we just wait for the prize giving for the Challenge Cup. We France will jump first, followed by Ireland, then the United States, Belgium, Switzerland, Germany, and then Brazil and Great Britain. And the United States and Brazil, they have a private battle because those two are competing for the one and only available place for the Paris Olympic Games. So there's a lot of action but let's watch some highlights whilst we go into the prize giving here in the arena. Well, wonderful scenes from the overhead camera here. The Polo Park at the top of the screen is just going out of shot now as we just wait for the prize giving. But before that, my co-commentator Jess Curtin, who's won in this arena herself a few years ago, is going out the back to see if she can have a word with the victorious Dutch team, led by Jos Lansik. Jörg Reeling, Kim Emmen, Willem Graver, who's just been victorious in the jump off of Michael van der Vloot with the wonderful Bobel Z NOP. All the ties done up. Everyone very relaxed around this little arena. Longing timepieces to be presented to the team. Just notice the 
ladies watch there that we presented to Kim Emmon has that wonderful new design of the double strap double wrist band Facilities built in 12 months. Some of the buildings around the outside not yet completed, but next year for the Longin FEI League of Nations final, everything will be completed. But that whole stand on the right hand side, as we're looking at the screen, that whole stand is all brand new indoor facility pool being built underneath. Restaurants, VIP area on top. And let's hear from Jess, who's with the winning team. Well, what a performance that was, uh, Jos. Um, your team, I mean, you've got the best riders here, but I mean, do they have to be put under so much pressure to perform? For me, not really. Um, I think we were a little bit unlucky the first day. All riders rode actually good, but uh, maybe a small mistake and the horse is jumping good. And uh, today uh, they know what they had to do and they rode... Uh, much better than the first day. Big words from a big man. Uh, they rode much better. Willem, wow, what a jump off. Exactly just the right time. Left the jumps up. You must be so delighted with Highway. Yeah, actually I've been uh, for quite a long time already very delighted with Highway. But uh, it's very nice to, uh, to do a jump off like this for the team. Normally you ride a jump off for yourself but you feel a bit pressure, you want to do good for your teammates and uh, when it turns out like this, then uh, I'm very happy for my teammates and for Highway and of course also, also for myself. <laughs> Kim, it was, obvious to see, it was obvious to see that individual riding at Milan brought you and Inflame up to a different level. Uh, how do you feel after your performance today? Okay, I felt really good after my performance. I was a bit disappointed with the mistake because it was not really... I mean, he jumped super all round. I didn't really ex expect it uh, to have the mistake there. Uh, Milano brought me for sure a lot further. Uh, different courses, different kind of show. So, yeah, I'm very happy with him. To you and Michael, you're two of the very best riders in the world, but I do have to ask you your own words. Michael, the first day was a disaster, you're, it was an embarrassment. You two of you rode absolutely brilliantly today. How do you feel now? A little bit better. Yeah, no, much, much better. It's true. Uh, the horse went jump fantastic, but I made a riding mistake. Uh, was stupid, I was embarrassing about that. But now I think we can enjoy it. No, as you said, uh, Jessica, uh, it was my own fault the first day. Um, it was not the horse, horse fault and today my job was uh, to go clear, uh, to get a place in the jump off and uh, uh, today I did right and, and Beauville did right as always. So, uh, yeah, very proud to everyone. Yeah. We are also proud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, great to hear from the winning team of the Challenge Cup. A bit of relief, perhaps, for the Dutch team as they have finally come out on top here in this arena once again. They have, of course, won the big final back in 2014, 17 and 21. This is the 10th year of the Longin FBI Jumping Nations Cup final. And Michael van der Bloten and Bobel Z NOP was on that team in the 21 final together. So it will just be a few more moments whilst the riders get back on to their horses for them to come down to collect the Longin timepieces and stand on the podium here on day two of three days of competition for the Nations Cup final. Tomorrow, the top eight teams will battle it out for the principal trophy and that will be at 1,500 hours, local time in Spain, 1,500 hours tomorrow. But tonight, it's about the celebration of the Netherlands and particularly Australia. You've done so incredibly well without that privilege of a discard score. And in third place, Argentina completing on, I'm sorry, Mexico on 
eight faults. They were the defending champions from the Challenge Cup 12 months ago, but it wasn't to be for them. They had two great clears, Eugenio Garcia-Perez and, and Contego, who jumped clear to earn the 50,000 euro bonus, being clear on Thursday and clear tonight. A super clear from Jose Antoni Chedra Egua with H. Lucky Reto that put them really in contention to have back-to-back -back victories, but it wasn't to be. They ended up with eight faults and left Australia and the Netherlands battling it out in a jump-off. walk away with one of those Olympic spots. So a very exciting day indeed in uh, prospect there. But a good showdown between Australia and the Netherlands to determine this year's uh, <laughs> launching FBI <laughs> You have to keep Los Gansic on his feet. Leading them in, acknowledging the crowd. Jos, victorious here five years ago, riding the Belgium. So the Netherlands, Jeff Reeling, Kim Emmon, Willem Grave, Michael van der Vloten, Long John Silver. Three NOP, looked after by Emma Stewart, King Emmon with In Flame Go, looked after by Barbara Kankanut. And Willem Graves Highway TM, Richard Skillen, and Michael van der Vloten of Bovel Z, and what a combination they are, Bovel Z NOP, and their groom, Alan Seidler. All the grooms coming in, of course, without the grooms, there would be no jumping. So, huge amount of congratulations to them, their dedication and their performance of producing these horses, helping produce the horses at the right time, the right place, wherever they are in the world. the podium, the winners of the 2023 London FEI Nations Cup Challenge Cup, the Netherlands. And well done, you're running to the podium, fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. 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 National anthem of the Netherlands. Kim Emmon, Willem Graeber, Michael Van der Vloten, Harry Smolders, who jumped on Thursday. Jos Lansig, the chef de king. So, coming forward. The Longines Vice President of Marketing, Bernardo Tribole, to congratulate the teams. And coming forward to and Elena to, uh, our, our two representatives of uh, handing out the beautiful timepieces. Vice President of Marketing and Elena Orozco, our brand manager for Launching Spain. You can see the double strap on that beautiful launching watch with Kim Emmon for the ladies. 
surprise. And it's now welcoming forward Sir Mark Samuel on behalf of the FBI Vice President and Executive Board Member on behalf of the International And now coming Equestrian forward to congratulate the, trophy. the victorious team, Mark Samuel, FBI Vice President and Executive Board Member to present the trophies. And now, what a fantastic operation that they put into place here at the Real Club de Polo as Emilio Zegre, president of the Real Club de Polo Barcelona Foundation, and Santiago, president of the CSIO of Barcelona. This is their 10th year of putting on the Longin FBI Jumping Nations Cup final. They will be here again next year for the new structured Longin FBI League of Nations. And as you heard earlier from some of the riders, regarded by one of the finest venues in the world for the sport of jumping outside. I think the riders will now be asked to go back to back on their wonderful horses. Lifted a trophy here at the Launch FBI Jumping Nations Cup final. Well done to the team, Milena, by your sensing, and of course, those fantastic uh, steeds as well. The horses out there, you're, you're feeling with Long John Silver, Kim Emmett with In Flame Gold, Highway TN for William Griffin, and Beauville Z, AOP for Michael Van der So the riders return Jeff Wheeling back to Long John Silver, NOP. Looked after by Emma Stewart, Kim Emmon to win Flame Go. Looked after by Barbara Kanka. Willem Graver, Highway to Yen. And Richard Skillen, responsible for the welfare of Highway to Yen. And Michael van der Vluten's Bovel Z and OP. Alan Seidler. And what a career Michael has had with Bovel Z. So, tomorrow is the final day of the 2023 Longin FEI Jumping Nations Cup. The top eight teams will come forward for the big trophy. Great Britain, Brazil, Germany, Switzerland, Belgium, United States, Ireland and France. But tonight it's all about the Netherlands. The victorious team of Jervreeling. Kim Emmon, Willem Graver, Michael van der Vleuten, Harry Smolders, who jumped on the first day, led by Jost Lantic. Many congratulations to the Netherlands, the winners of the 2023 Longin FEI Nations Cup Challenge Cup. From me, Phil Gazala, it's good night. We look forward to being with you tomorrow, 1,500 hours, local time in Spain, for the big final. Bye-bye.